in case you weren't keeping count at home right now, that includes besides Texas now, Louisiana, North Carolina, Arkansas, Alabama, Utah, New Hampshire, Indiana, and Ohio. Now, all of these are examples of states that have tried to rein in state Medicaid funding. In other words, just the amount of Medicaid monies they get to stop funding Planned Parenthood. That does not kill it off at the national level. Keep in mind that it has uh, many discretionary funding prerogatives in Washington that would simply not kill it off, but just to choke it at the local level here, which even at the local level wouldn't kill it off. But the fact of the matter is this Planned Parenthood has been a galvanizing force uh, within the Republican Party, particularly among the likes of Ted Cruz and, as I said, Bobby Jindal, who's facing a judge slapping him down for going too far. Steve Forbes on that and what this means. Steve, what do you think? Well, I think it just goes to show in the base of the Republican Party and indeed among some independents, there's real outrage about what those videos showed. And the question is, OK, what can you do about it? And so they're trying to find legal remedies, both on the local level and federal level, to cut this thing off. As you know, Neil, uh, the federal government is not supposed to fund abortions. That's been true since the 1970s with the Hyde Amendment. And so uh, Planned Parenthood, because money is fungible, has been getting around that. So this is a legal reaction to Planned Parenthood running around that legal prohibition going back to the 70s on abortion. Now, we should be clear, uh, federal monies, we're told, with Planned Parenthood do not go for abortions. But, as you said, money is fungible, and we do know that Planned Parenthood, as an overseeing organization, over looks at abortions and handles abortions. So where do taxpayers draw the, the difference of the line? Well, that's what uh, this is all about. And uh, in terms of a Planned Parenthood, what uh, Congress is trying to do is saying since money is fungible, since you're getting around the spirit of the 1970s law, we'll cut you off and put the money for uh, clinics that provide health services uh, around the country. Uh, Planned Parenthood's not the only one in the business of health services. And that's what the Republicans are trying to make the point about. So wouldn't Republicans be wiser or have a more doable, winnable strategy in not entirely defunding Planned Parenthood, because that, I guess, seems to be an uphill battle, but, but defunding those efforts that even hint of, of uh, fungibly going toward abortions or this type of activity? Well, they could uh, put language in if they can't uh, defund uh, Planned Parenthood as a whole by attaching to other legislation uh, that the White House would consider a must. Uh, you could put in a stronger language, which would give local governments uh, efforts to uh, attack uh, Medicaid funding that may be going to uh, funding abortions like uh, at Planned Parenthood. All right. Um, Steve, you can just hang on there. I want to bring viewers up to speed on a late breaking news development or following here. We have now uh, the state of Texas effectively saying Planned Parenthood in our state, you are persona non grata. You cannot be allowed to operate in our state. But Steve, what that harkens back to is on, among the eight to 12 other states that have toyed with this, invariably a judge stops them in Florida, no less than three cities. As soon as the governor hinted he wanted to do this, three cities preempted him by, by challenging a foreseen effort. So this doesn't end without a, a big fight, right? Well, on something uh, like this issue, where you have sides that are uh, very, very attached to it, it's no surprise you're going to get legal challenges. But the thing is, you keep probing, trying to find ways to carry out the will of the legislature in this case, and uh, eventually you will succeed. If you take a passive approach, that's what frustrates people. You keep trying to probe, find ways to do it, and legal ways to do it. And so one judge says one thing, I guarantee you that at a higher court level in another state, a judge or a panel of judges is going to say, something else. So this will eventually uh, perk its way up in the next couple of years to the Supreme Court. But to get there, you've got to fight on the local level as well as the federal level. All right, now Ted Cruz has made this a central cause. He's obviously getting a lot of money for his campaign. He's picking up in the polls. You think this is the reason? Continue to fight the good fight on this? It's uh, one of the reasons, but I think uh, the base of the party, in case uh, Donald Trump uh, falters, is looking for somebody else who can carry the banner against uh, the so-called Republican establishment. He's trying to do it. Carly Fiorina is going to try to do it, which is, by the way, why the debate at the end of this month among Republicans is going to be, I think, a very fiery one. All of these candidates know they have to break through. But do you think, finally, Steve, that this gets to the point of being worth threatening to shut down the government. 
Well, in terms of, uh, we know that a uh, possibility is coming up, and one of the things I think we're looking to the leadership of the House is, is do you have a plan B? Uh, do you have ways of doing this? For example, there's an article today by Steve Moore, uh, the famed economist, pointing out about how you can use the debt ceiling in a much more constructive way of starting to rein in the government by tying the debt to GDP ratio to government spending and having restrictions on that and automatic cuts if these restrictions are uh, blown away. So the various ways you can do this, and I think what people are looking for, okay, uh, if uh, the, the ultra-nuclear approach of government shutdown doesn't work, what other tools do you have and are willing to try? And I think that's what you're going to see play out on this case in terms of the government debt ceiling. All right. Thank you very much, Steve Forbes.